What's going on guys and welcome to free pilot training. Today I'm in Conway, Arkansas and I'm going to get some seaplane training. Okay, so I got my friend Seth Lake here from VSL Aviation and uh, he's gonna take me for my first seaplane ride today and I'm pretty stoked about it. Thanks for joining me today. Oh yeah, thanks for having me. This I really, is a blast. I really yeah. appreciate it. Can you tell me just a little bit about this plane before we get going? Sure, so so this is a Legend Cub J3. So this is a, this is a, first of all, it's not my airplane. A friend of mine, uh, Brian Brandon, who I love, he's, he's a good friend of mine. He's at Vision Jet training now, learning how to fly the SF-50, so I don't really care if he's not here to enjoy because he's getting to fly <laughs> cool jet. Anyway, he, he bought this not too long ago. It's a new Legend Cub. I think it's like a 2015-ish vintage. Uh, so it's a, the J3 design, which it looks identical to the old J3 that everybody knows. But Legend Cub made some modifications to it. They put a better engine, better propeller, and then they put two doors up front, so that's really cool. It's got two doors, and you can solo from the front, which if you know anything about the old J3 Cub, you can only solo from the back. So they made a modification there. And of course, now it's on amphibious floats. That's a, so, that's a winner right there. So these amphibious floats allow us to land on the ground, uh, on asphalt, and park it in a hangar. And then we can go pull the gear up, and we can land on water. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take off on the ground, land on the water. Awesome. I can't believe I'm getting to do this today. Uh, I actually didn't know that. I knew that this was a Cub, but honestly, I don't know that much about Cubs. And I thought it looked like a J3, but this thing looks brand new. And so I thought, I wonder if this is the same Cub I'm used to, but apparently it's much better. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have fun flying it. Yeah, I think so. Let's get in there and get going. So taxiing this is kind of like taxiing a tail wheel, really, because it's it's a free castering nose wheel, or it actually has free castering float wheels. Oh, so okay. you have to use a lot of differential braking. Have you ever taxied a uh, Have you ever taxied a Cirrus? No, I haven't actually. Okay. So it's similar to that then. Yeah, but the the tail wheel flying that we did. Yeah. It's a it's a lot similar to that. Okay. Yeah, if you feel me on the runners, I'm just kind of shadowing you. Yeah. I'm trying not to put, put in it, too much input in there. Conway Unicom, radio check. Conway, Dennis F. Cantrell, Field Airport. Automated weather observation, two, three, four, niner, Zulu. Wind, three, zero, zero, at eight knots. Peak gusts, one, four knots. Visibility, more than one, zero. Sky condition, clear, below one, two thousand. All right. Pretty good crosswind. It's actually forecast to die down a little bit. Yeah, I saw that. All right, so looking at the windstock there for okay. crosswind controls, it's actually pretty important in one of these, which okay. is, and it's also a light sport, so just a very light aircraft, so you really yeah. want to pay attention where the wind is coming from. It's funny, that and stock over there is staying the opposite. Yeah, it keeps the appropriate crosswind controls in. This is so cool. Yeah, I love flying Brian's plane because they're all cool. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brian. They, Have I met they, Brian? They make me look so cool. <laughs> Checking the mags. Yep, mags. Carb heat. Good to go. The other thing that this Cub has is an electrical system. Oh yeah, that's so true. You notice we were able to start. Uh, we were able to start the plane with a key like you normally would with a yeah. Cessna. Usually you have to hand prop these old J3s. Yeah. Like a 65 horse power engine. You know, not a lot of uh, not year? a lot of the Cubs have the electrical system. What year is this aircraft? I think it's like a 2015 something, okay. something like that. I wish I knew for sure. I'll, I'll look it up. So you can see we've got water, gear up, gear down, 
land. Yeah. Uh, hopefully the camera up there will, will see it. But that's something you'll hear me say is, hey, we're landing on the water. The gear is up. My camera is kind of covering up, but there's a little silk screen right I here that says check gear. I saw that earlier. Yeah. I was like, check gear? What is that talking about? Yeah, because landing with the gear down in the water is a big deal. Yeah, you probably flip this thing Yeah, over. you'll flip it over. Now, landing on the land with the gear up isn't actually as big of a deal. Yeah. Uh, the bottom of these floats will actually take a little bit of that impact, and, and the plane probably won't be damaged too badly. Obviously, you wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Now, straight float aircraft that aren't amphibious, they actually are rated for a certain number of landings on hard ground. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, you can actually do that on a straight float airplane and not really do any damage at all. What we're worried about is landing with the, the gear down on water. Don't want to do okay. that. All right. Well, you want to try the takeoff? Uh, yeah, I'll try the takeoff. All right. I'll get us lined up here. The trim's okay. right here. We'll just kind of leave it neutral. What are we rotating at here? Uh, so right around, you'll see the, uh, we've got the G5 right here is yeah. the easiest, or, or whatever you'd rather. Yeah. Uh, right, it, it'll want to float right around, uh, so rotate speed's 43. Oh, it's written right uh, there. And then you can you can climb out at about 60. So. Okay, sounds good. It may want to float up a little bit before then. Make sure you're holding that crosswind control in. Okay. And uh, it'll do just fine. Conway traffic, Yellow Cub 15 Lima Charlie, taking off runway four, straight out departure to the north. Conway. I'll get us lined up here. Final's clear. Doors and windows are, are open. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. As they should be in a cub. And it feels awesome. All right, you got the controls. I've got, got your the throttle controls. there. Yep, I've got the controls. All got right, your throttle. controls. I'm going to be right there with you. You'll have to give a little bit of right rudder there. There you go. Rudder will be pretty effective. Left aileron. There you go. Give it all that power. All right, power set. There you go. And there's your rotate. Gently rotate back. There you go. Hold that. Hold it. Right there. Hold any ground effect. There we go. There we go. Very good. You can let it crab now. Woo! All right, so ease up on that bank. Try to level the wings and a little bit of left rudder, actually. Yeah, you're still like... So you're making a common mistake on a tandem. You're looking over my shoulder and notice how we're banking? Yeah. So look out at the wingtips, kind of use your peripheral vision, oh, keep okay. the wings level. Don't worry about looking straight out. There you go, worry about keeping those wings oh, level. okay, yeah. There you go, and now pitch up right to the horizon and start a good, good climb out about 60. Oh, doing it again a little bit. Level those wings. So you look at your wingtips. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of left rudder. There you go, got your ball right there. And you can you kind of use it almost as a instrument takeoff. Oh, okay, I see that now. Is this your first time flying a tandem aircraft too? Yeah, it is, it <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah. All right, gear is coming up. Roger. All right, gear is up. Awesome. That'll give us a little bit of performance, but probably can't tell that much. Oh my goodness, this is ridiculously cool right now. Isn't it awesome? Yeah, it is. All right, so we're going to climb up to about 2,000 feet. Okay. And I'm going to show you an approach to stall. Okay. Uh, because I think it's pretty neat, you know, to something to show your viewers yeah. on these old airplanes. Because these old airplanes, you know, although this isn't an old airplane, it's, yeah. it's built like an old airplane. It's, it it's, has some newer technology. Yeah, it's design. It's an old, old design. Yeah, but there's a couple of J3s I fly that are are bare bones. They they only have like three gauges. Uh, they don't have a stall indicator. Okay, so you're looking uh, for buffeting. Yeah, so you're looking for buffeting, but the the J3 actually has something else that's kind of neat. Okay. That shows when you're getting close to a stall. And you'll actually see it on that video. We kind of did a soft field takeoff. Yeah. On that upwind side, we actually saw uh, the door float a little bit. Yeah, I saw So that's actually a stall indication. Whoa, I didn't know that. Yeah. So a stall indication, you'll see those doors start to float up. Ah, okay. And uh, we'll get up here to a good altitude. We're, we're going to kind of work our way over to uh, a lake that's right over there. So I'm just trying to... We got kind of the town of Conway in between us, so I don't want to yeah. fly right over the town. So we're going to get over here to the river and work our way around. Good 60 knot climb here. 
60 knots is kind of the airspeed for this plane. Okay. There's everything's a 60. <laughs> I like it. I like simple stuff. So you see our lake right over there? Yeah, so that's the yeah, lake. Yeah, that's the lake. Okay. All right, my controls. Your controls. My controls. Your controls. So real quick, I'm just we're here at like 2,000 feet. I'm not going to do a full stall. I'm just going to do an approach to stall. Okay. And just to give you an idea, because this is what we're going to see on landing. All right, so pull it back to idle. We'll be coming into our, kind of our approach to land. Okay. We'll gently raise the raise the nose up. We won't be doing any glassy waters today. I'll talk about that in a second. And then right in the flare, you'll watch those doors, and you'll see the doors start to float up. Oh, that's weird. You see that door yeah. floating up? So that's our little stall indicator. So as soon as I break AOA, ah, it goes right back yeah, down. Yeah, it goes away. That so is really cool. That's just kind of a neat little feature of the Cub. I'm always, once you fly the Cub a lot, you're always kind of looking at that, and that's yeah. something you expect to see during the flare. Especially in a standard J3, you're yeah. sitting in the back seat. Uh, you don't have good visibility. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's kind of one of your primary indicators uh, that you're at the right speed. If you try to force it down before the door is floating, you're probably going to bounce. Oh, okay. So it kind of skips like a rock on the water there. Yeah, the water is kind of the same thing. We we want to avoid, uh, you know, forcing it down on the water. Yeah. All right, man. We're close to our lake. I love this kind of flying. I know, this is really neat. So what we're going to do is, uh, we know that the wind is kind of coming out of the yeah, west. Yeah. And we're going to make a pass over the lake, and we're going to see where the texture is. Okay. And we can kind of tell a little bit of the wind direction yeah. by what the water's doing. Yeah. You can already see the east part of the lake. Yeah, you see it's, how it's, it's, it's kind of glassy? Yeah. So that's actually a more difficult kind of landing because really, you can actually... Uh, lose sight of where the horizon is ah. and hit the water unexpectedly during a glassy water landing. Okay. So the west edge of the lake here is real textured. Uh, so that's that's kind of the area that I would want to land on is, okay. is water with those little bit of ripples there. Yeah. And of course we're we're doing this at like a lake, not open ocean. You yeah. know, landing open ocean that brings up all other sorts yeah. of you know swells considerations. Like yeah. Landing landing you know, parallel with the swells and all that stuff. Hey, I read the I read the dash one occasionally, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not ditching a C-130 here. <laughs> I'm sure some of the principles are similar. Yeah. All right. So one of the things that I'm going to look for, you know, I'm going to look for boats because yeah. boats have the right of way. So I I don't want to land to put a boat in hazard. So I can already spot two. Yeah. yeah I see one for right sure. Right there, and then maybe third one right there. So I'm kind of flying a downwind right now. I can kind of tell that by this G5 is really nice because notice we're doing 75 indicated yeah, and our ground speed that. is 91. And so we know based on that, based on what we were seeing at the yeah, wind we socks the there, yeah. we've got a tailwind right now. So yeah. we need to land with a headwind. Yeah. That's the great thing about this lake uh, is wherever the wind's coming from, you can give yourself a headwind. That's true, yeah. You know? The other thing I'm looking at is where we're going to dock because we're going to yeah, I got my I got my coffee gear. We're gonna land. We want to make a cup of coffee before we head back. So I like these docks over here. Okay, uh, yeah, I see them to the left there. And we're actually set up really well because we want to dock into the wind. Yeah. And then when we unmoor and leave the dock, it's gonna blow us out, which is what we want. Okay. If you've got you know if you've got the wind that's constantly pushing you into the dock. Yeah. It's gonna be really difficult for you to for you to leave. You know, because okay. this thing turns when you when you land, it kind of turns into a sailboat, and it's actually ah. called sailing gotcha. instead of taxi. All right, so we've got kind of a stationary boat right there. Yep. We've got a boat here on the shore. I'm thinking landing in between those two boats. Okay. Uh, we'll make our approach over, kind of right over here. Okay. All right, landing gear is up for a water landing. All right, I'm going to shadow you on the controls. I'm not, I'll, I'll stay light on the controls. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's it's remarkably similar to, like, a regular landing. It, it, okay. It's going to feel a lot like the tailwheel training we were doing, okay. landing on grass. Uh, it's, it's not that complicated. All right, got my carb heat. 
Gear is up for water landing. Roger. Don't mind me. I'm oh, you're good. getting the fuel there. So, if you wanted to slip, is there any considerations here? Yeah, slipping is is definitely doable. So we can actually put in a little slip right here. Okay. It slips really well because we've got a lot of drag with those floats out there. Ah, yeah. So if you're doing a confined area landing, that's what you want to do to get down fast. Yeah, you can you can slip and and get really good short field or short water, you know, performance. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm a little fast here. Power's back at idle. I'm going to raise the nose up here. I want about 60. You can see this nice texture. It's really apparent where the water is. Landing gear is up. There is 60. All right, I'm going to set my pitch attitude right there and just let it settle. Oh. Keep the stick back. And we're going to go into what's called a plow taxi. Plow taxi, okay. So there's a couple different kinds of taxi. One's a plow taxi, so I'm putting the water rudder down. That's what I did right there. Okay. And that put our rudders out. And so now, using the rudder pedals, I've got a water rudder, and it gives me a lot of controllability. So oh, your weird. controls, my controls, go full back stick pressure, and just taxi around using the rudders. Make a couple turns there. See how responsive that is? Oh yeah, that is very similar to just taxiing. Yeah, yeah, very similar. Okay, so I'll show you something else. Okay. And that's called a step taxi. Okay. So a step taxi, we're actually going to get on step. Okay. So there's step, and then okay. I'm going to reduce power to about half. Okay. And now we're kind of floating along like this would be like a boat. This feels just like a boat. Yep. And you can tell we, we're we going much faster. Yeah. Uh, so if you have a, a long distance to taxi, this is the preferable way to do that. Okay. And I feel you on the back stick like that. How yeah. much back stick are you putting in for that step taxi? Uh, all back stick to enter the step taxi. To enter it, but then you took yeah. some of it out as you. And then as we exactly as we as we get established in that step taxi, I kind of release that back pressure, and you're kind of mid stick pressure. Okay, mid stick. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is the trickiest part about seaplane flying: is finding a place to park your plane. Because <laughs> these marinas are made for boats. Yeah. And so what's real common at uh, boating marinas are these big posts that stick up. Yeah, I see that. And they're, they're, they're the perfect height for you to hit your wing on. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of not ideal there. We could also put the gear down in the water and taxi up onto a ramp. Oh, OK. So right there is enough for us to do a takeoff. So we're going to go aft stick, water rudder up. There we go, we get on step. Accelerate out. See, we've got this antenna right here oh, we need yeah. to get around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't run into that guy. <laughs> Their 5G might not work for a while. <laughs> yeah, that would not be ideal. All right, landing gear are up. Oh, I can't believe how cool this is. So, when we're doing this, are, is there more than one type of landing we should be thinking about? Yeah, so there's 
There's three landings. You got your confined area landing. Yeah. Well, a, a normal landing, a confined area landing, uh, and a glassy water okay. landing. So the glassy water is you're basically setting a pitch and power setting, okay. and you're just letting the plane fly uh, at a at a known descent rate, you know, into into the water. Okay. And so I guess that kind of gives you a nose up attitude then. Yeah. So I can kind of show you what that what that looks like. Yeah. Sure. Or we can try a normal one. How about I get you set up here? I want okay. you to try this one. Okay. I've got you into the wind. Trim is kind of set. All right, your controls. My controls. Your controls. All right, looking for 60 knots. Yep, looking for 60. We got this boat that we're flying over right here. Yep. He's going behind us. Conway traffic. Scott Hawk, 1227. Taxi. Yeah, yeah, we can slip it down. There you go, that's good. Recover from the slip. Hold it right there. All right, power back to idle. Or there. Yep. All right, now set your pitch attitude, a little more back stick, a little more back stick, right there. Hold that pressure, hold that pressure, hold it back, hold it back. Woo, there you go, you. my controls? Your controls. My controls. So controls. What, I, what I did right there is I left it on step. Okay, I see. And that's kind of the glassy water? No, that was that was just a normal just landing. Just a normal landing, okay. What I was saying I was doing is, is I'm leaving it. Oh, you're leaving kinda, it on step. I'm leaving it on step, so we're gonna step taxi. Because that's a much faster way, like I was saying, to taxi over where we're going to go. I we just, also... I just did my first seaplane landing. Yeah, that was it. Oh, I mean, oh, I wasn't on the controls at all. That's so cool. A little man. bit of coaching, that's it. All right, so coming in, you when you came off of step, you went, uh, you put the rudders down once you came off of step? Correct. Okay. Because that means we still have rudder control then. Correct. Okay. I can't believe how cool this is. So right now, I see you got back stick pressure in. You're just basically, I, I guess in a way, pinning the tail. Yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, we still want to keep the prop out of the water as okay. much as we can. So you're just basically holding it up kind of like you would uh, holding a boat motor more in the water, I guess, Yeah. in a way. Yeah, and I'm constantly fighting those crosswinds. Yeah, I feel that. So is it a thing to like park in the middle of the water ever and like on Indiana Jones, you know, where he's out there fishing and Indiana Jones is like, hey, oh, yeah. it's time to go. We could do that. Yeah, Make definitely. Our coffee on the pontoon here. All right. We look clear. We're past the no wake. So I'm going to do a step taxi now. Okay. downwind. Oh, okay. And then make a turn to take off. So what we're going to do here Oh, weird. Yeah, we're kind of cross-controlled a little bit to get pointed into the wind. And once we get pointed into the wind, we're going to go full power. And we're already on step, so we're accelerating nice. Okay. And take off. Oh, that's awesome. As soon as you did that, this, this question came in my mind. What, is there a maximum speed on that, like making that turn? Yeah, well, there's not really a maximum speed so much as there's a... A, a cornering velocity. Ah, cornering velocity, yeah. Yeah, where if you try to corner too hard, you're going to pick a float up, and that's where you could ah. do a water loop. Okay, yeah, that would not be fun at all. We're going to try this other lake you're talking about? Yeah, I think we got some, uh, yeah, we got we, some daylight, we yeah. got some fuel. Yeah, we got, we got some time. I think, uh, looks like we got about 45 minutes to an hour of daylight left. 
Yeah, that one I've done some splash it goes on, but I haven't uh you haven't docked. I haven't docked there. So really what I like to do before I dock is like go out and kinda test it first. Yeah. How many horsepower is this engine? Uh this is a hundred horsepower. It's okay. a it's a O two hundred. Okay. All right, your controls. My controls. There's something spiritual about looking out the side of an airplane and seeing the ground. I know. That's too soft. Oh yeah, I have no idea where we're going, so I'm hoping we're headed in the right direction. Uh, I think that's our lake right there. You okay. see the... Uh, yeah, I see the water. See the water. Hey, this is kind of an ab workout, too, if you're in this back seat. Kind of like training around. <laughs> <laughs> I need an ab workout. Have you guys Fair considered... Uh, running base, running two, two, four, seven, have you considered the Arkansas down. River, or do you think it's too shallow? I think Brian might have done a couple on the river. I'm a little nervous about the river because of... It changes so much. Uh, yeah, because of like the floating debris in there, yeah. uh, it makes makes me a little nervous. The other thing to consider is when you're landing on a moving body of water, you have a hole speed for these floats. So a maximum speed that they'll travel through the water. Oh, okay. And they will stop traveling at that speed, oh. or they won't go any faster. So if you land into the current, and the current maybe is moving at uh, 10 miles an hour, yeah. and you land at 60, and the hull speed is only 60, then you'll you'll have a a, a sudden stop basically. It'll nose in. Oh shoot! Uh, and it can flip the plane over. So typically, it's a little, it's really weird on river, and this is like Alaska pilots watching this, probably shaking their head because they're the experts. <laughs> yeah, but sure you know, are. if you're a float plane driver in Alaska and you're landing on a moving, like a river, you're going to land typically with the current oh, because okay. you're worried about your hull speed. Uh, if it's, if you know what the river current uh, speed is, and I, don't, I don't even, I wouldn't even begin to try to land on like yeah. a body of water that's moving that fast. So. I don't even know where you get that information. But yeah, it's uh, all like, okay, I, I just know this because... Traffic I've been here before. Like, you you yeah. only get that through experience, you know. All right, uh, let's uh, let's start the descent a little bit. You pull some power out. We're obviously, you know, we're looking at our G5 again. We're we've got a uh, headwind here. Okay. But I don't want to just come in and land. So let's we want to do an let's kind of drop in. We're gonna do an inspection pass around to see see what we can see. Okay. What a beautiful evening. Oh, this is great. So. Second, second time's a charm. That's how that goes, yeah, right? Yeah. Second time's a charm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's kind of go in over here. Okay. And let's kind of get down uh, a little bit lower, and we'll just kind of run up the. Okay. Just to do the it. lake this way, you know, kind of towards the petty gene over there, over the water. So kind of get us over to the water first. Okay. And then we'll turn over the water. I think, if I remember correctly, there's a uh, there's a dock over on the south side of the lake. Okay. Yeah, we got boater. He's moving, making a wake. We got this this boater over here. Okay. On the south side, not moving. We're definitely gonna land into the wind. Into the wind, there. going to the west here. Oh, so we'll have a little bit of a right headwind. We got some nice textured water, you know, not glassy. So that's yeah. good. So this is just an inspection pass then. Yeah, yeah, we're just going to kind of hold this altitude here. Yeah, I'll get it a little faster then. And I'm interested to see, like, what's in this cove here? Uh, we have a, I think I see some swimming buoys. Yeah, that looks like some sort of water release, so I bet that's something we want to stay away from. Yeah, probably so. Yeah, we don't want to go in there. Yeah. Yeah, sure enough, you see that dock, all the big poles sticking up? Oh, yeah, you we definitely that? don't want to do that one. Uh... And that looks like kind of the only... Yeah, it might be the only show in town. There might be something farther down here. The only dock there. And then that, all of this stuff over here has a bunch of trash on the shoreline. Like, uh, not trash, but, you know, yeah, brush. stuff, brush that's going to grab our, our floats. That's no yeah. bueno. Yeah, if you want to make, like, a right... 
Right, right crosswind. Climb out. I don't know what those little white things are down there. That's weird. I'm guessing they're trees. Yeah. Maybe like somebody planted an orchard or something. Oh, yeah. I smell that chicken farm. Oh, yeah. I like the clouds and just the sun are just at the most beautiful angle right now. Oh, man. Yeah. I do. I believe I see a dock out there. This might this might work out. We might be having coffee after all. <laughs> we're we're eating into our coffee time. <laughs> I see that. I see that. All right, let's make a make a circle there. Yeah. So. Look at the winds here. What, yeah, what are so you thinking the winds are? Yeah, I'm setting up Where a little are they bit, from? Uh, basically, you're out of the right, so we'll set up for a little bit of a right base here. Okay, so you're going to land. Yeah, kind of land right that there. way. Okay. Uh, slow us down here. Landing gear is up. Roger. Water rudder is up. We are landing on water. Carb heat. Uh, we'll turn the carb heat on. Yep. Carb heat's on. Sunglasses down. Yep. <laughs> All right, there you go. All right, nobody's ahead. Do have a little bit of a wake there. And there you go, hold it up. You gotta set that pitch attitude right there. Whew. A little bit firm, but... All right. There you go. So now at idle, go back go back to idle, and what the plane is going to do is it's going to weather vane. Okay. And so if you if it, if the wind the wind's actually died down a lot and yeah. it's kind of undefined right now. So full back stick pressure with the water rudders up, the plane will naturally weather vane. Okay, it'll go right into the wind then. Yeah. So now with that, you can see that our we, you know, we landed with a slight bit of crosswind. Yeah, the wind's just right really left. calm, you know? Yeah. So this gives us a good opportunity to do one of those, uh, a step taxi. We'll kind of S-turn to the left. Okay. And then take off to the right. We're clear that way, right? Yeah, we okay. are. So I want you to go full power. Okay. Full back stick. Over there. All right. And then I just get up and step here. There you go. Now push it over. And reduce power. There you go. Okay. And make a left-hand turn. There you go. See how you have to have kind of opposite rudder? Yeah, I see that. Turn them with the ailerons. There you uh, go. Let's hold this. Let's hold this uh, direction right here. Okay. Car beats off. Okay. And good. then we're gonna make a slight right-hand turn. Okay. And then add full power. There you go, full power. All right, power. Now set. let's hold it right there. Just a little more back stick, a little more back stick. There you go, right there. And she's gonna float off. You just hold it and then hold it in ground effect for water effect, if you will. <laughs> there we go. Good speed. Now you can climb away. Oh, awesome. Very good. Oh, that is so awesome. That was your first uh, step taxi. Step taxi to take off. Yeah, step taxi to take off. Very that, nice. That was not quite a uh, confined area take off, though. No. It was kind of like a mix, I guess. Yeah, it was kind of a mix. All right, let's let's uh, let's enjoy this sunset back to Conway. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, this kind of flying, it's like a recharge, because, you know, any time I fly, like this week I'm in the in the CRM sim, yeah. my annual refresher, and uh, you know we were doing emergency procedures all day. So I know it's just it's just a pounding. You just take yeah. a pounding. That Dude. is really neat. Oh Look yeah, at that house that right out. there on that island. Actually, they could probably see it with a. That camera is pretty right wild. There. I've never seen that house. That is wild. Somebody spent a lot of money to get that out there. Wow. Yep. They're ready for the zombie apocalypse. That's probably what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a prepper out there. Oh, I've never seen anything like that. That is nuts. That is really cool. Wow. 
So landing this on the, the land is, is pretty easy. It's, really? It's very similar to what we were doing on the water. Same pitch attitude. Uh, it's a little bit easier than I, I think a tail wheel. Oh, okay. A little less squirrely because it's pretty stable. You got the the wide stance of the floats. Uh, and it is a little odd because it's a GA airplane that has four wheels. Yeah, you got four wheels. That's so like taking off a shopping cart. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little different. Conway traffic, Cub 5, Lima, Charlie, five miles to the north. We'll be entering the left downwind runway 4, Conway. All right, should we dip down and follow this for just a second on the other side of this bridge? Yeah, let's get over the bridge. We can dip down and follow the river. Yeah. It looks clear. All right, you want to take over? Yeah, my controls. Your controls. My controls. Oh, it's a little bumpy down here next yeah, to the river. it is for some reason. I'm seeing lots of fish jumping, though. <laughs> Man, look at the current down there on that river. It is really going. Oh, there's a boat. Yeah, we're well clear of him, more than 500. Conway traffic, Yellow Cup 5, Lima Charlie, entering a left to downwind, runway 4, Conway. All right. Runway looks clear. I'm gonna go ahead and put my landing gear down because we're landing on the ground. Conway traffic, Cub 5, Lima Charlie, left base, runway 4, Conway. Alright, everything looks good. Final is clear. Conway traffic, Cup 5, Lima Charlie, final for Conway. A little low, but that's aiming to me at the thousand footers. I'm aiming at the numbers. Okay. There's 60. Crosswind control is coming in. Landing gear is down. That was smooth. I could feel the whiskers on the tire. That was so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the Amphib lands. Pretty easy. Oh. But man, that was fun. Yeah, I had a blast. I really appreciate you inviting me out to this. Well, we have to do something else, too. What's that? Well, you'll, you'll see. This is your initiation to being a seaplane pilot. Okay. There's, a, there's extra work to be done on the, on the post flight. Uh, I, I haven't heard this, so... <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, it's, it's nothing terrible. It's just, uh, you know, everything <laughs> has a trade-off. So you get to do something cool, but okay. you have you have more work to do now Okay. when you're done flying. So what's the deal here? You know what this is? Uh, looks like some kind of pump. Yeah, this is a utility pump. Okay. So these are... These floats aren't just one big open piece. They're actually broken up into compartments. Oh, okay. And the point is, if I hit something... Oh, you'll still have flotation. I need to be able to hold the plane up even when one of these floods. So they're compartmentalized. Ah. See if we get any water out of there. There may not be that much water in there. Oh, I see there. Right Got a little bit. Yeah, is this move, real? Move or to you, the next one. Is this real or are you just trying No, you do this every <laughs> flight. You oh. do this every flight. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, there's a lot more in that one. Oh yeah. Oh, we got a gusher here. <laughs> we got a gusher. Worth it. Hey, thank you guys for watching and thanks Seth for taking me up for a spin in the old seaplane. I had a blast. Yeah. I think next time let's get you in the front seat. Yeah, definitely. Get you practice using the gear. That was the main thing is today was just kind of a fun flight intro. Yeah. Uh, operating the gear it was a little challenging. So yeah, I can see that's that. That's an added thing. So now you've got a couple landings in. Right? Two landings? Yeah, two landings. Oh, I'll have to log, put that in my log book. Yeah. Uh, step taxi, plow taxi. So we need to try out a glass of water. Yeah. Find area, you know, try some more step taxiing. What do yeah. you think of the step taxi? 
That was really interesting, but and to be honest, it was kind of natural because it felt a lot like a boat. Like, yeah, you know, because you want to get up on the yeah on plane. Yeah, I on think plane is what to get you, going. Yeah, boaters call it. It's funny that boaters call it on plane. Yeah, it's like airplane. It's, it's on step. Yeah. You're um, always on the plane. Yeah, you are always on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Also. Um, we did a little bit different direction over on Seth's channel, and there's more of this video over on his channel. And uh, we actually made it more of an adventure, I guess you could say, than just learning. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and smash like if you did. We'll see you in the next one. Approach, you're not going to believe this. I just bought it free pilot training. I'm going to keep on watching.